demons and a weird time glitch are two of the things we're going to be reading about today. What's up, glitches? I'm Angie Matrix, and people send me their weird, unexplainable, true stories to this email address, and I share those with you. I have thousands of unread emails in my inbox from people about things like glitches in the Matrix, dreams, aliens, and the paranormal, so if you're into that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Sit back, grab a snack, and let's get weird. My dog soul slash spirit angel. Hi, Auntie. Hi. I've been watching your content from the beginning and I would love to share my story with you. I met my husband back in 1997. When we met, my husband had a big, gorgeous greyhound with tuxedo markings. Tuxedo as the dog was named and I quickly became BFFs. My boyfriend joked that I was tuxedo's mama and so we better get married to make it official. We did. We settled into our new home and married life. Tuxedo became our little starter child. We had birthday parties for him, complete with his dog friends, games, and a doggy cake. His new grandparents loved him dearly and often stopped in to bring him a gift or a treat. Each day after work, I took Tuxedo to a trail near the woods where we met a group of friends and walked our dogs together. On special occasions, he and I stopped by McDonald's to share a cheeseburger meal. Each night, I gave him a kiss and said to him, Good night, I will see you in the woods. We will play in our dreams. Our happy starter family lived our quiet life for a few years. One evening, Tuxedo had a massive seizure. He was soon diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor. We were gutted. We did everything we could to make his life comfortable. At the same time, I became pregnant with our daughter. Tuxedo was my constant companion through morning sickness and everything it takes to get ready for a new baby. When our little girl was born, Tuxedo was wonderful with her. He was gentle and protective. As our daughter began to grow and settle into her little life, Tuxedo began to decline. It was soon time to say goodbye to our little starter family dog. It was heartbreaking to see him go. At the same time, I had a beautiful daughter who was loved beyond measure. I truly believe that Tuxedo waited until our daughter was born and that we were settled into parenthood before he left us and crossed the Rainbow Bridge. Several weeks after Tuxedo passed away, I had the most vivid dream. I dreamed that I was in the woods. There was a beautiful cabin, a sparkling lake, and tall pine trees. I could feel the breeze and smell the pine scent. Suddenly, Tuxedo came running to me. He spoke to me, not in dog barking way, but his words filled me. He thanked me for a lovely life, and he told me that he knew that I would be a wonderful mom. He told me that he is doing great and very happy. Then he said that he can no longer visit me because it would be against the rules, but that he would always be around. He told me that he loved me and then ran off. I woke up feeling at peace. Fast forward several years. My husband was at the pound with a friend who was there to get a dog. He and I had not even discussed getting another dog as we now had two children and very busy lives. My husband was walking down a row of dogs when he locked eyes with a tiny little dog. This dog had the exact same markings as our tuxedo. He looked like a tiny version of our dog. The way my husband tells it, something in him stopped and it just clicked. He had to get this dog. And so he did. We often say that Tuxedo sent us our new dog. Not only do they look alike, but their personalities are so similar. I truly believe that Tuxedo is a guardian angel, that his little spirit still looks out for me and our little family. Thank you for taking the time to read my story. Auntie Matrix, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I love that we started this video with a like heartwarming dog story. And you know what? It's very possible that Tuxedo is reincarnated into the new little Tuxedo Jr. I wonder what you named the new one. Did you name it like Tuxedo Jr. or did you give it a separate name? I love that he came to you in a dream and he let you know that he was okay. I wonder why he said it was against the rules. He couldn't visit you again because it was against the rules. I feel like I've heard a lot of people say that, that loved ones visit them in dreams and say that they can't come again. They're not like allowed to come again. But then there are people that visit multiple times. So I'm not really sure what against the rules means. Maybe it's different depending on the soul. Do you guys think that animal souls have uh, different rules than human souls? Or do you think a soul is a soul and like I could have been a cat in a former life or you could have been a giraffe in a former life? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. That was a beautiful story though. Thank you so much for sharing demon in my house. Hi, Auntie. Hi. I'll get straight to it. Paranormal slash glitches have been happening to me my entire life, and I discovered last year that I'm a medium. I have tons and tons of stories, but this one really scared the shit out of me. Back in 2017, my now ex-husband and I and my infant son moved into a new house. We were on the main floor with downstairs tenants. I remember the day that we went to go take a look at it. As we were walking through it, I instantly had a bad vibe. Something was very wrong about this place. The energy was dark. At first, I thought it may have been residing energy from the previous tenant who happened to be the landlord's son. And I guess things weren't good before he moved out. Holy was I wrong. But we ended up moving in anyway. Moving day came really fast. And before I knew it, I was in the house by myself with my son unpacking boxes while my husband was at our old place picking up more stuff. The first thing that happened was on the very first day. 
My son was asleep in his car seat and I'm unpacking a box in the living room. Suddenly, I hear something crash in the kitchen, which startles my son awake and he starts screaming. I run in there to see what fell and there's a box that had been sitting on the counter now on the floor open with everything spilled out of it. This was a heavy box. There is absolutely no way that that thing could have just fallen. The air was thick in the kitchen. The hair on the back of my neck stood up. I looked around the kitchen and said, yelled, get the f out of my house. You are not welcome here. Only beings of love and light may enter. Of course, when I tell my husband, he says it was probably sticking off the counter already and just fell. Yeah, of course, that must be it. I'm the one who put it there and it was pushed all the way back. But whatever. Fast forward about a week. I get my first night of sleep paralysis in this house, and it's the most terrifying encounter I've ever had. I watch this black mass with red eyes slowly push our bedroom door open and creep in towards me. The closer it comes, the more details I can make out. It doesn't even look human. It has like tentacles. And as it crawls on top of me, it shifts into something that looks like an alien and a demon mashed together, creating some kind of terrible, disgusting monster. Almost like venom, but a thousand times more horrifying. It held me down for so long, but that's not all it wanted to do to me. And obviously I can't go into detail because of guidelines, but it wanted to S.A. me. Oh my God. Succubus or incubus or whichever one it is. I have never been so scared in my entire life. I completely blacked out after that. My brain shut off. That or I have blocked it out to protect myself. After that night, sleep paralysis became a regular thing. I would see orbs in my son's room all the time on the baby monitor. He would cry constantly. I once saw an orb shoot out of his star machine and watch the machine fall backwards. My son had been fast asleep and there's no way it could have fallen. He woke up crying instantly. Fast forward again to a few months later. My husband is out of town for work for the weekend and it's just my son and I. 9.30 at night and I hear three knocks at the door. Three knocks is not good. There's no way I'm answering it. I'm thinking who the hell would be at my house at this time? I make a quick call to my husband just because this is really strange and I don't feel safe by myself. Even he thinks it's a little odd that someone would be at our house so late. He said just don't answer the door and keep the lights off. I hang up the phone and put on my big girl panties and take a peek out the window. What a surprise there's not a soul in sight. I'm a bit freaked out but I'm also used to the dark energy in the house by this point. About 20 minutes later I hear two more knocks. I ignore it and get up and go play my piano for a while. I decide to record a song on my phone. The dog and cat are asleep in the living room and my son is asleep in his room. As I'm playing the piano, I hear what sounds like a little kid running down the hallway up to me. The living room kind of goes straight down a long hallway where the bathroom and the bedrooms are. So it sounds like little feet slapping from my son's room all the way down to the hallway and up behind me. In the recording, you see me just stop playing and listen for a second, turn around and turn back to my phone and just stop recording. I know people would be like, why would you stop recording? Because I'm literally freaking out now. I feel this rush of air come up behind me just as I stop recording on my phone, followed by a low growl in my ear and a giggle down the hallway. I was frozen, paralyzed. I could nearly see my breath. It got so cold. Once I regained my composure, I watched back the recording. You can hear the feet. I begged my husband to listen to me about the house. I told him about all the other stuff going on, and he didn't believe me until I showed him the video. Even he was freaked out after that. You could hear the little feet slapping down the hallway. Unfortunately, I've had several phones since then. Oh, so I no longer have the video. I was going to say, please tell me you attached this video. Plus, it was very faint anyways. I have more stories about that house, but it would take forever. My downstairs tenant ended up getting in a car accident one night and dying. And that certainly didn't help the energy in the house. Anyway, that's all for now. If you like this, I'll give you some more stories. I have hundreds from one just to another. Love you. Love you too. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Okay, the ones that like want to hold you down and... S-A-U, those are called, there's like a succubus and an incubus, and I feel like one is a woman and one is a male spirit. Okay, I just looked it up. So a succubus is a female spirit and an incubus is a male spirit. So that is what that was. But which one was that? Because you said it was not even looking like a human. It had tentacles and things. I wonder which it was or if it wasn't that at all. And I'm completely wrong, but that's normally what that is. And you also definitely had multiple spirits in that house because you had that, the weird tentacle incubus. And then you had the child, first night kitchen, 
Nope. Kitchen ghost stuff is like top 10 on what freaks me out, man. (laughs) I wish you had that video because I would have loved to hear the little tiny footsteps. I'm hoping you're not living there anymore, but thank you so much for sharing your story. Hostel Nightmare. Hi. I have only just started watching your videos and I'm so invested in them. I do have a story of my own, which I really love to share. It still freaks me out to this day. It'll be very long story as a lot of things happened. Here goes. So when I was 16, I was moved into a care system and had to live in an independent hostel with ages from 16 to 21 year olds. Anyways, the hostel was monitored by the staff. The rooms each residence lived in were numbered from one to nine. I lived in number one. While living there for a month, I met a girl called Jess and we became best friends. She lived in room number four. We would hang out a lot and we would always chill in her room, which is the far end of the corridor. We were chilling in her room one night chatting away when her ashtray flew across her bed onto the floor. We both got freaked out and left into my room. The next day, we were still trying to process what happened. We did tell the staff that was on shift that morning, and their response was, if I'm honest with you guys, you're not the only ones who have said something like this before, which gave me even more chills. Staff never told us what was said other than reports of things being moved from their rooms. Anyways, we still hung out in her room and more things kept happening. My friend had a cupboard door, but the door had a slide lock, which no one else had. One night we heard knocking three times. Every night this would continue for a few months. About two months passed with not really anything else happening until one time we left her room just after my friend locked that cupboard door. As soon as we left the room, we heard the door open. We both looked at each other and said, think the cupboard door opened. We popped our heads in and there was the door open. We ran out of the bedroom scared. This is when things started getting more weird. We used to chill out on my friend's bed a lot, still in room number four, and would feel the bed move like someone was under it, pushing it up. This happened a lot. But what was weird is that my friend had everything she owned under her bed. Not even a small toddler can get under her bed. We would experience things being lifted up and put back down right in front of our eyes. This was only happening in her room until one day I left my room all tidy and organized to go sleep around my mom's for the weekend. When I got back, one of my slippers was perfectly balancing on my chest of drawers. No one had come in my room and it was always locked when I left. There was another time when my friend bought a new pair of socks and she laid them out on her bed and then we both decided to go out. When I turned back to close the door, the socks were still on her bed. When we came back into her room, the socks were gone. We were so confused, but with all the weird stuff happening, I just had this gut feeling that they were in my room. We then went back into my room and they were on my bedroom floor. Weird things continued for a while until one night, me and my friend invited a few other friends around to chill out and watch a movie. Me and my friend decided to have a chat and sat in front of each other like we were in the mirror, both legs crossed. We were talking normally, and then the next minute, we both started mirroring each other, doing and saying the same thing, same face expressions too. It was like someone or something had a hold of our bodies. We were not in control. It was like we were in the mirror. My heart's pounding while writing this. Anyways, once we stopped, we both looked at each other in fear, trying to figure out what happened. We then looked over at our friends and they were all so white in the face and just so shocked. We explained to the staff and they were too creeped out thinking that we were making it up. Next day, I left to go to see my mom for the weekend. And while staying there, I had horrible sleep paralysis, which I have never experienced in my life. I felt like I was floating off of my bed and then pushed down by a dark figure. I then tried my best to move, and when I did, I saw a little boy at the window. But ever since I left the hostel, I haven't had any other experiences. Going back to the mirroring with my friend, I still strongly believe a spirit went through us both that day. Still haunts me to this day. So my first instinct was obviously something is in this room, is in room number four. Maybe someone died in that room. Something happened tragically in that room. But something is in that room, right? That's why all these things are happening in that room, which what I don't know is why things started happening in your room, in room number one, or why it seemed to follow you to your mom's. Do we think somehow it got attached to you then? Or was there something that you took from room four that then was in your room that maybe you took with you to your mom's? The mirroring thing is so weird. And the fact that there were all these other people there to see it makes it even better. I love when we have witnesses. It's nice to have other people that were there with you that witnessed the event to be like, yeah, that happened. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I think a ghost tried to take my body over. Hi, Auntie Matrix. Hi. I wanted to write to you for so long, but I was afraid I wouldn't be able to explain the story and have it make sense. LOL. 
This is just one of many things that have happened in my life, but this was the longest and most painful, extreme things to have happened to me and my family, so this will be a little long. Three years ago, my husband and I were newlyweds and found our dream home. We quickly moved in. I take great pride in my ability to feel energies on different types of frequencies and vibes. I am a very bright, warm energy and other energies come to me. After years of feeling spirits around me and their energies, before I walk into any home, I quickly feel it out so I know how I'm going to react and prepare myself. Anyway, I felt this house out and I could feel an energy, but it was nothing that concerned me, especially since this was our dream home. We moved in and quickly start to have some weird things happen. My husband worked a lot, so I was mostly alone with the kids with time on my hands. One morning, I got out of the shower, and I had a weird urge to sit on the side of the tub and do nothing. When I did that, a decorative frame fell off the wall and shattered my candle on the sink. This frame was made of a painting fabric. It weighed nothing. The glass from the candle flew all over the place, including me. Oh, my God. So this home had a large shed in the side yard that had a padlock on it. Our landlord told us that it was the previous tenant's items and they would come get these items soon, so not to worry. The nosy side of me got the best of me, so I broke the lock. I needed some space to store items, so I was like, what the heck? It was filled to the top with furniture and home items. I even brought some items inside because they were so cute. Oh no, why would you do that? I did some digging and found a name on some paperwork and I left it at that until I started having pictures fly off the walls at me and things around me fall. I had recurring nightmares and my six-year-old daughter started coming to me saying that there was something wrong with her room. Our three kids quickly started to share a room because they felt uneasy because you moved the stuff from the shed. I bet that has something to do with it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to find the woman who lived here before and ask her if she experienced any of these things. I did some Google searching and found the woman. I found her obituary. The obituary that said that she died in her home, the home I am living in. My heart dropped. I knew it. I knew those were some dead person's items in that shed. Now I knew there was something there and I wasn't crazy, but I assumed that we could live in harmony. I started to quickly notice things getting more and more aggressive. So I would politely ask Lisa to stop. Shortly after, I started seeing black shadows out of the corners of my eyes, and my dogs would go crazy. They saw it, too. I quickly asked a neighbor about the home, and she told me that the woman died of a drug overdose in the bathroom. Same bathroom. Things were flying off the walls. Shortly after, I saged the home and property. It got quiet until my daughter came into my room at 3 a.m. and half asleep told me that there was someone there in her room trying to drag her to hell. What? I said, absolutely not. I went to that shed and drug through every bit of paperwork I could. I quickly found out this woman was schizophrenic and would send herself into psychosis with speed and hard drugs. I found a notebook of hers where she was explaining she was being watched and someone was going to harm her and that she had hate in her heart for the neighbors. Not long after I started becoming severely depressed, I turned to substances and I started to write in journals to cope. I knew this house was messing with me. I would hear a woman talking at night like it was right beside my head and there would be no one there. My daughter started to dream that I would die and I would have the same dreams, but I would die in my bathroom. I quickly realized I was living this woman's life. I had read her journals and it all fell into place. She was afraid of her husband and I was doing all the things that she was. I freaked out. Rightfully so, friend. Rightfully so. I became so desperate I was losing my mind. I saw a psychic and he looked right at me and said, you need to move. So for the next two years, my husband and I searched for a new home. In the two years, you had to stay there for two more years because you couldn't find a place to live. Oh my God. In the meantime, my husband became depressed and violent, just like Lisa's husband. We were shells of ourselves and we were no longer wanting to live. We would stay at hotels just to feel like humans again. We were always sick physically and mentally. My husband spent six months in the ICU and needed six surgeries to keep him alive at one point. Finally, two months ago, we found a house and we jumped on it. We left everything behind and took off. The first week of living in our new home, I was so sick I couldn't move. It was almost like I was withdrawing from a substance. And now that I'm clear-minded and able to feel again, I know I was sick because I left her behind. I broke free. I have not had a single nightmare since. We are a big, happy family again. Now someone else lives in that house and I worry about them. It's going to be a never-ending cycle of dread. I'm just so glad I am out of that hell I lived for almost three years. I wasn't going to make it another year. 
Thank you so much for your time, Andy. I have several more stories to share. If you have any questions, please reach out. Oh my God, I am so glad that you were out of there. It is so, so crazy how much the energy of a home, of things that happened in a home previously can affect the people currently living in the home, affect them in physical and mental and emotional ways, in terrible ways. And it is so crazy that you couldn't find a place to live for two more years and you had to deal with that for two years. I would have maybe tried to see if I could stay with a relative or something. I don't even know. But I'm so glad that you got out of there. Oh my goodness. I feel like it started when you moved in, but it sounds like it got 10 times worse after you went into that shed and took some of the crap from the shed and brought it into your house. But it's actually a good thing that you did that because you learned about this woman. And you learned about the history of the person and the history of the house so that you are prepared and you knew mentally what was going on. I feel like if you didn't know what was going on, you would not have made it. I don't think you guys would have made it if you didn't know what was going on and you couldn't justify what was happening. I want to say if you never went into the shed, maybe a lot of this wouldn't have happened. But it's, it did, like, like you said, it did start even before you went into the shed. So, so crazy. How do you even cleanse a place like that to be? have it be a livable place again? How do you even go about doing that? I don't even know. Does anybody know? Let me know in the comments. Love some tools for future victims of this kind of situation. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Tap, tap, tap goes the demon. Hello, Anti-Matrix. Hi. I love you and your stories and finally ready to submit my own. Woo. When I was in college, I lived in a newly built house with two other girls. One night, two of us girls were at home, but the third was staying at her boyfriend's house, which was unusual because her and her boyfriend usually slept at our house. I had rearranged my bedroom that day, and as I was laying in my bed that night, I kept getting an eerie, icky feeling that I was being watched. I brushed it off as adjusting to the new furniture arrangement in my room, but it was getting stronger and more uncomfortable. Then I heard it, this tapping sound starting. It was coming from under my bed and would move from left to right underneath me. Tap, 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 again and again. I ran into my roommate's room crying. She had me get in bed with her, and as I told her the story, the tapping started in her room under her bed too. I asked if she could hear it and she said yes and then gave me her rosary ring to wear because I was really panicked when I realized that it followed me. The tapping kept going on here and there, but my roommate and I were finally able to fall asleep. I then had a dream. In my dream, I was laying in my roommate's bed and I was texting. Honestly, I only knew this was a dream because I hadn't brought my phone into my roommate's room. That is how realistic it was. In the dream, my phone started shaking violently and I knew it was this evil spirit and what I had to do. I stood up on the bed and yelled, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, be gone. Then I woke up. The tapping was still happening, so still scared to death, I whispered it, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, be gone. Bam, 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 bam. The tapping got loud and rapid and angry, but then finally tampered out quieter and slower and went away completely. Next morning, I was trying to rationalize or think of a reasonable explanation for the tapping. Maybe it was the house creaking or something. My third roommate came home and asked how I was. I told her I hadn't slept well and had a strange night. She got super interested and asked why. I told her the story, feeling slightly dizzy. Then she told me why her and her boyfriend hadn't stayed the night last night. Just the night before all this happened, they were sleeping at our house and her boyfriend had a dream with a demonic being manipulating things in their bedroom. In the dream, he was trapped in the bedroom and the being had books and objects floating all around the room and was trying to impersonate his dad. He forced himself awake from the dream. They had sheer fabric draped above the bed that was in the room as a canopy and when he woke up, he could see a shadowy humanoid shape crawling around above him between the ceiling and the drape. He woke up my roommate and they turned on the light, but needless to say, they didn't sleep well and didn't want to sleep there again the next night. I didn't feel as crazy after that, knowing it wasn't just me. We didn't experience anything else like that again in that house, so whatever it was did seem to go away, but I slept with the light on for a year after that incident. Friend, I still sleep with the light on. I'm not sure exactly what it was or what triggered it to come pester us. Any ideas? Thank you. This is very interesting. What's interesting about this to me is that it wasn't there when you got there, right? If it was something that was maybe connected to the place that you were staying, I would think that the occurrences would have started pretty early on in you staying there, but you didn't say that it was when you first were staying there. You just said sometime. I also think it's interesting that you didn't hear the tapping the night before. The tapping was in the other room. 
And then they didn't stay there that night and then you experienced it and then you moved and you experienced it in the third room. I'm not sure how someone brought this in or why this entity was there, but I'm really, really super glad that you had a dream that basically told you what to do. And then you woke up and did that and the thing went away. Thank God the thing went away. I say this all the time and I'm gonna say it again. Your words are powerful. My friends, do not forget that. Thank you so much for sharing your story glitch guardian angel demon timeline switch i don't know that's literally the title of this story the person doesn't know what to call it what's up auntie hi love you love your page love you too i've got a story for you and i don't even know what i would call it a glitch a guardian angel a timeline switch i don't know what happened or how to explain it but it's a little long so let's jump in for some context when my husband slash then boyfriend was moving back to the states he lived in his grandmother's townhouse for about a year it was usually just him as she only used it for her visits to Miami. The townhouse complex shared a fence with a massive hospital, so there was always a lingering energy. My husband and I are both sensitive and have had paranormal experiences, but we were both especially weary here. When I was alone there, I'd be too scared to switch floors. For instance, one time when I slept over, my husband woke up late for work and rushed out, so I just stayed upstairs all day. I was starving and thirsty, but was too scared to go down by myself. I was in college at the time, but that day I skipped school, drank water from the bathroom sink, and just tried to sleep or watch TV until he got home. Like that? Scared. Something about this place was just wrong. One day after class, at around 2 p.m., I went to wait for him there, and I think I fell asleep on the couch. I think. In what I thought was a hyper-realistic dream, I heard some rumbling upstairs, so I assumed that my boyfriend had gotten home and left me sleeping while he put his stuff from work down to change. I went upstairs to greet him but didn't find him in his room. I figured he heard me coming and hit to play a joke on me from his grandmother's room like we've done before, so I went in to check, but I still couldn't find him in there either. I looked around a bit, but when I turned to leave the room, I saw my older sister sitting in the armchair in the corner. I don't like this already. She was facing down and I asked her, how did you get in here? Why are you here? She slowly turns her head to look at me and as soon as her eyes meet, I know that it is not my sister. My stomach drops, I'm frozen in place and overcome with a feeling of absolute dread. The thing sees that I've caught on and that I'm terrified so it starts laughing at me with its chin down, eyes wide and widening. I'm too afraid to leave because it means I'd have to approach that thing to get to the door and I'm paralyzed in fear. It's now cackling so loudly like what I can only describe as an evil clown laughing at me with completely expressionless eyes locked with mine. Its grin keeps widening as it cackles much wider than what's humanly possible and then the room felt like it was slowly starting to move. With every second that passes, my body's fight or flight response is skyrocketing. Something bad is happening to me. I need to make a move. I muster up everything in me to make my run for the door. As soon as I get my foot off the floor, I wake up on the couch at my parents' house, 20 miles away where I lived at the time. Thank God it was all a dream, right? I go to find my phone to text my boyfriend about it, but I can't find my phone can't find my purse either. I noticed that it's dark out, but whatever. I figured I'd do find my iPhone on my laptop. Where's my laptop? Where's my backpack? I go to check my car and notice my shoes weren't by the door, so I just went barefoot. Where's my car? At this point, I'm freaking out when my boyfriend pulls up with my purse, backpack, and shoes in his car. We greet each other and he asks, how did you get home and why did you leave all your stuff like that? I was super worried. I check the time and it's now 7.30 p.m., five and a half hours later than when I got to his place. By my timing, maybe an hour passed during this whole experience. I can't account for how long I got home or where those five plus hours went. Was this a glitch in the matrix? A guardian angel? Did I switch timelines? I have no explanation for anything and I'm not sure that I want one. Anyways, thanks for letting me tell my story and I hope that you enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hold on a second. So you went after school to your boyfriend's place, this creepy ass place. It was his grandma's next to the hospital with the weird energy. You went there after school, fell asleep on the couch, woke up at your mom's house 20 miles away. 20. And it's five hours later. First, I was like, okay, maybe quantum immortality. Maybe this thing was an actual entity or being. It was not a dream. You died. Switch timelines. Can't be, though, because in what timeline would you wind up at your mom's but your stuff was at your boyfriend's and it was five hours later. That doesn't make sense to me. So I'm going to nix that idea. 
You obviously didn't drive there because your car you left at your boyfriend's. Did you walk? Could you walk 20 miles in five hours? You could probably walk. That's plausible, right? To walk 20, but barefoot? Did you check your feet? Were your feet dirty? How did you get there? The beginning part, the dream part, did not seem like any sort of alien encounter because that is a lot of lost time, right? Happens with alien abductions and encounters like that where maybe they abducted you and then they put you back in the wrong place. That part would make sense, but you didn't experience that. Like you were experiencing a dream about this weird thing that looked like your sister that was definitely not your sister. How did you get there? I honestly, I don't know. I need to hear everybody's opinions on this. What do you guys think? Please tell me in the comments because no idea. Literally no idea. This is like such a crazy story. Thank you so much for sharing. Bloody Mary. Ooh, a Bloody Mary story. Hi, Andy Matrix. Hi. I love all the stories that you read. This happened when I was around 10 years old. I was at my cousin's birthday party. There were probably five other girls at the party too. We played all the normal birthday games. And as it was getting dark, someone had the idea to play Bloody Mary. All the other girls went before me and would come out of the bathroom and tell stories of how they got scared. It was finally my turn. I went into the bathroom with the lights off. It was completely dark there. I turned around in a circle saying Bloody Mary 10 times. I thought you just had to say it three times. 10 times in a circle. The last time I stopped in front of the mirror and looked at it, the mirror was dark, but then I saw a circle opening up in the middle of the mirror. It continued to get bigger until it was the size of the mirror. I could see something inside the circle in the mirror. As I looked in, it felt like my soul was pulled out of my body and went into the mirror. I saw the inside of a log cabin. There was a fire in the fireplace. An old woman sat in a rocking chair by the fireplace rocking. Why are rocking chairs so scary? Next to her on the floor was her dog. She looked to be knitting something. This seemed like something sweet I was seeing. I looked at the woman's face and she was rocking and knitting. She must have felt me looking at her because she looked up at me. Her eyes were completely black and her face turned sinister. It scared me so bad I fell back. When I did, I could feel myself fall back into my body. I could feel the pain as my soul went back into my body. I was then standing in the bathroom and there was nothing going on with the mirror. The opening had disappeared. I ran out of the bathroom as fast as I could. I told the other girls in my family what I saw. No one believed me. They thought I was making it up. I can still see that old woman's face and feel the feeling of my soul going back into my body. I don't know if I opened up some kind of portal or what. It still freaks me out to this day. Number one, we believe you. Number two, mirrors are portals, can be portals, especially if you have a mirror face and a mirror, watch out. Number three, I thought that you just had to say Bloody Mary three times. I didn't know 10 times. I don't know what. Maybe you unlocked something. Maybe doing it 10 times. Unlock something even crazier than seeing the Bloody Mary lady in the in the mirror. Four. I feel like I have so many things here. It was painful for your soul to go back in your body. That I found really odd because people astral travel all the time and, you know, their souls leave their body. But you're always uh, tethered by this. Um, I think it's called the silver cord. Is that what they call it? I always forget. But no one has ever said that it hurts to go back into your body. I have never once heard that it hurts. So that's really, really weird that it hurt to go back into your body. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that you went through this weird portal. And I mean, I don't know if it's true in real life, but in Supernatural, Black Eyes is a demon. That old lady might have been a demon. I wonder if her dog was a demon too. Old ladies, creepy. Rocking chairs, creepy. This whole thing is creepy. But it's so weird and crazy. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Has anybody else experienced anything like this? I saw death. Hello, Auntie Matrix. Hi. I absolutely adore your content. And after months, I finally built up the courage to tell my story. This happened many, many years ago when I was working in an office building to which I had to take the bus every day. It was a normal day. I took the bus to work as usual. And in the morning hours in my area, the bus is filled with elderly ladies going to the market. I sat down in the middle of the bus on the second row of seats from the door. I scanned the bus with my eyes, taking a glance at the old grannies and wondering how on earth did they have the energy to wake up and just go out that early in the morning? That's when I saw him. At the very front of the bus, there stood a man. He was tall, bald, very pale, wearing a black suit, black shoes, and a black hat. I was immediately creeped out by his pale skin and the fact that he was not moving or blinking. But I don't like staring, so I just looked out the window. A few stops later, a very, very old lady makes her way up to the doors, wanting to get off at the next station. I remember watching her tremble with her cane, being so frail and old, must have been at least 90 years old. That's when the man moved for the first time. He came across the bus until he got near her, gently grabbed her arm, looked down at her, and asked, Are you ready? The lady looked up at him, sighed, and after two seconds of silence, she replied, Well, I've lived a long, happy life. My children are grown and well-off, so I think I'm ready. 
With that being said, the doors opened, they both got off the bus, and that was it. I'm convinced he was deaf, and he just gently took the lady. They clearly did not know each other as they sat in different ends of the bus during the ride, and that exchange of dialogue simply makes no sense for any other context. Also, no one else seemed to be aware of the man's presence as I saw absolutely no one taking not even a glance at him during the whole ride. And lastly, for clarification, the granny was not in danger of falling or stumbling on her feet, so the man would just jump to her rescue. No. She just made her way to the doors and waited, and he straight up walked up to her, grabbed her arm, and told her the above. No one believes me, but that's fine. I just hope not to see him again anytime soon. We believe you. So I'm just going off of Supernatural here, obviously, but in Supernatural, they show you that death actually does, yes, take people gently. He's actually speaking to their souls, right? Because he's actually trying to convince them to go and not just stick around on the earthly plane. And in the show, as you know, sometimes... People do not want to go. They say, no, I'm going to stay here. I'm not going with you. But they are gentle. But that's interesting, too, because I feel like death is normally talking to someone's spirit or someone's soul and not someone in human form. So I wonder if the old lady that you saw was actually her spirit. Maybe it wasn't her physical body. Maybe you were seeing her spirit that went up and was leaving the bus and death was like, hey, you ready to go? And she was like, all right, we can go. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Please let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for sharing your story. Lucid dreams, ghosts, or aliens? Hi, Indie Matrix. Hi. I absolutely love your content, and maybe you can help me figure out what's happening. I've always had vivid dreams as a child and always felt like they were more than just dreams. The older I got, the weirder and more vivid they became. The first was the time I visited Atlantis or something similar. I was playing on a cliff with some friends and we were jumping off into the sea. When I jumped, I was pulled down to the sea floor. As I was being pulled down, I see this magical city. I was in a state of shock that something so beautiful existed. The colors were vibrant and there was trees and beautifully made buildings. Once I arrived through the air bubble that surrounded the city, I was met by a guide. She asked me where I wanted to go, and I remember saying, anywhere, this is amazing. She smiled and started walking. We walked past waterfalls, and then this vibrant purple tree. It was alive, almost fiery, and it was the color purple I've never seen before. I was mesmerized. Then my dreams get weird. A few years have passed and I'm in college now living with my boyfriend at the time. We fell asleep like any other day and I remember that I woke up or I'm still sleeping, I'm not sure. I sat up and at the end of my bed is a man with his back turned to me. We don't say anything and I'm not scared. He turns to offer me food. I still can't see his face, which was a little bothersome, but I just tell him I'm sorry I'm not hungry and I lay back down and fall asleep again. I don't know the history of the house, but it never felt haunted to me. One year later, I moved and I'm still with the same boyfriend. This one still haunts me to this day. I have sleep paralysis and this happens sometimes so I'm not scared. My body's asleep and my mind's awake. It's probably 2 or 3 a.m. so we've been asleep for a while and all of a sudden I feel my body being levitated off the bed. I can see everything around me except myself and I can tell someone or something is moving me. I can tell my body is really high in the air and I feel compelled to ask whoever it's moving to put me down. This loud roar of a voice responded and said, no. And then I freak out. The voice did not sound friendly. So I knew I needed him to let me go. So I say again, put me down now. And then I slowly am being lowered down. As I'm being put back to bed, I feel my boyfriend's body being rubbed against my skin. Crazy. I don't think it was a dream. It felt way too real. And the last dream, I'm now married with a four-month-old at this time. My son's taking a nap and I'm completely exhausted, so I must have fell asleep. But I could feel my whole body vibrating and my eyes are going back and forth really fast behind my eyelids. Then I see my whole living room just how it is in the waking world, but I know my body's sleeping on the couch. I sit up and this man is standing behind the couch looking at me. He's pale with the whitest hair I've ever seen. He can talk in my head and I can respond. And all I feel is this pure love and acceptance. He offers me money, but it's otherworldly and I tell him I can't use it. And as soon as I say it slash think it, the money changed to American money. My eyes go wide and I say, wow. He looks at me with amusement. Then he holds my head in his hands and puts his forehead against mine. I feel peace to a degree I've never felt and just love. And then he's gone. I go down the hall to my bedroom, but the room looks different than the waking world. It's pure white and mirrored and everything's soft and furry. There's a white cat on the bed and I lay down on the comfiest bed and pet the cat. The cat shows me so much love. I'm not a fan of cats, but in my dream, it didn't matter. Those are my wildest experiences. Maybe I'm astral traveling or an alien tried to abduct me out of bed or I'm just a crazy sleeper. Ha ha. I don't know. I'll let you decide. 
Okay, the first one when the man is like offering you food and you're like, no, I'm good. I'm not really sure what that was. Could have been a dream. Could have been a spirit. I don't know. The third one, I feel like you're definitely astral traveling. I don't know where you are, but that place sounds lovely. And I wonder if that person that was just pure love and you were in this wonderful, loving place, I wonder if that person was some sort of like spirit guide of yours, hard dimensional being of love and light, obviously. The middle one is where I'm confused because it sounds like when you immediately started saying that you were feeling like you, your body was raising off the bed, I was thinking immediately oh, you're astral traveling. It's not actually your body. It's your soul coming out. But the fact that you felt like someone was pulling you out and you yelled at them to put you down and then they did. I'm not sure if you were astral traveling. And the fact that you could physically feel your boyfriend's body being rubbed against you as you were lowering back down says to me maybe it was not your soul and maybe it was actually your body. So I'm not really sure about that one. I wanna hear everybody's opinions. Let me know what you think that was in the comments. Thank you so much for sharing your story. My doppelganger. Hi Jess, hi. I have been a big fan of your content for a while as I have always been intrigued by unexplainable slash bizarre stories. I'm not sure if the story would seem strange enough to be a glitch in the matrix, but it's a scenario that has stayed with me for the last few years and has sent me down a few rabbit holes with various friends. When I was between the ages of seven and 12, I would spend a week to 10 days at my cousin's house during the summer. We would go to water parks, swimming, bowling, buy pizza, play video games, etc. It was always fun and we were around the same age and we got on really well together at the time. This weird event takes place when I am nine or 10. My other cousin was still a baby and he had issues with his ears, so my aunt had to take him to the doctor's office several times during the summer. My aunt drove us down into town center and promised me and my cousin that she would buy us pizza and crisps if we waited in the car while she took my baby cousin to the doctor's office. Since my cousin and I were nine or 10 and the doctor's office was just beside a playground, we begged her to let us run around this playground for a few minutes while she picked up the prescription. I don't remember why, but she insisted that we stay in the car while she went into the office. My cousin and I were a bit disappointed and confused as the car was parked right between the doctors and the playground, but we played Luigi's Mansion on his Nintendo in the meantime. I was more disappointed than my cousin and kept looking out the window, hoping that my aunt would come back out and change her mind about the playground. For the context of this story, an important thing to note is that I have three quite distinct features in my appearance. Firstly, I have extremely thick, curly brown hair that was shoulder length at the time and is still one of my most defining features to the point where strangers come up to me and compliment my hair on a frequent basis and people recognize me immediately because of it. The second, which is less obvious to a passerby but more obvious to me, is the way that I walk. In videos of myself when I was a child, it is particularly apparent that I walk in a slightly different fashion to others. Up until this point, I had never seen anyone naturally walk with the same mannerisms as me in my entire life, not even my immediate family members. The best way to describe it is a jolly walk where my head moves slightly side to side and I place a bit more of my body weight into my right leg. It is not that obvious to other people, but I find it to be very important when I watch videos of myself. And lastly, which isn't as defining as the other two, is that I wear glasses. While my cousin finished up playing his turn at Luigi's Mansion, I stared out the window into the playground where I saw what appeared to be, well, me. There was a girl, no older than 10, who had a thick curly brown hair that was shoulder length. This caught my attention immediately as it was frizzy and curly and it framed her face in the exact same way as my hair did mine. It was the exact shade of brown that mine was. Even certain bits of her hair had tints of bronze from the sun like mine did. She also wore glasses that were similar shape to the ones that I wore at the time. She was playing a ball game with a bald man, presumably her father, and was walking back to him in the same way that I walked. She put a little extra weight onto her right leg and her head moved slightly side to side like how mine did on film. Honestly, it was like I was watching a video of myself. Her skin was extremely pale like mine and her pink t-shirt was the exact t-shirt that I owned a year previous as it had the same design on the front and the same sort of frilly sleeves. In fact, the multicolored spotty leggings that she wore were extremely similar to a pair that I had also used to own. What startled me the most was the way that she smiled. Whenever I found something delightful or funny when I was young, I would grin with all of my teeth and tilt my head to the left. The bald man spoke to the girl and she did this exact thing mannerism. I only saw her face for a split second, but I tell you, her face was so similar to mine that I gasped. I told my cousin who was sitting beside me and pointed to the girl who was holding the plastic ball, and even he seemed a bit weirded out. He was not and still isn't the sort of person to find the situation weird, so this encounter must have been significant for him to be weirded out. We tried to convince my aunt to let us go to the playground when she came back, but she refused and drove away. I'm not sure why I didn't tell her about the girl who looked like me in the playground, but I was nine or 10, so she probably wouldn't have let us in there anyway, even if I had told her. What do you think? Do you think this was a doppelganger, a crossover, or a really bizarre coincidence? Thank you so much for reading about my experience. Thank you for sharing your experience.
So a doppelganger is someone that looks just like you, but normally it's not a good thing. Normally seeing your doppelganger is not a good thing and you clearly seem to be okay. So I don't know if you saw your doppelganger. Maybe that was you, but like in another timeline, maybe the timelines were bleeding over in that spot for some reason. I'm not really sure what I think about this one. What do you guys think about this one? Let me know in the comments. That concludes our creepy compilation for today. If you have a story that you want to share, you can send it to antimatrix at gmail.com. You can get my merch, my Discord, and all my other links at tessicavision.com. We also hang out and read stories live here on YouTube and on TikTok, so look out for that. And remember, we believe you. If you want to keep it going here, you can check out this video or this playlist.